Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another Blue Archive video. So let's talk about what is happening right now in Blue Archive. What's the plan for you guys if you guys are looking to pull for the upcoming characters right after the 6% banner. So uh, the current banner, if you guys are not aware, is going away very very soon. Now before that, let's jump into a couple of things. Right now it's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Alright, today is the 14th. If you guys are watching this late, you will still be able to log in to claim the free pyroxenes that will be given out to you every single day until 19th of February. So that you're going to get a total of 1,200 pyroxenes. So make sure you guys do that. And also, big shout out to Blue Archive. Recently, their Discord members got 150,000 players in there. So for a thank you gift, they'll be giving out the 10 recruitment ticket to everyone which is always a good thing. So make sure you guys log in right now. Uh, if you guys are not aware, you log in today. Just by that, you will get all of these gifts in your inbox so 20 free pulls just like that uh make sure you guys use it if you guys want to use it the banner for the six percent is still there at the time of me recording this video but it's going away in a couple of hours all right so with that being said let's talk about what is happening right after swimsuit hanako so this is where we are at right now swimsuit hanako and wakamo so in case you guys are wondering they already announced what's the next character on Twitter, they'll be doing a rerun for Sumair and Amy. Now, should you pull? Obviously not, all right, because these two characters are available in the standard banner, and also you can farm their shards easily. These two characters are probably the, the last one that you want to try to waste your pyroxenes on. Yeah, as you can see right here, you can basically buy this from the, the shop easily. So this is something that you can basically get. And let's talk about what is happening afterwards, right? So if you notice, we already have this one. The Kit Shun, the Small Shun, Casual Saya, Kokona. This was what was announced previously. All right, this is what we had uh, before the Swimsuit Hanako and Hinata came in. Now, following the roadmap, uh, they already announced that we will have Swimsuit Mimori. Uh, she's going to be the next character that's appearing in Blue Archive. Now, she's going to be a very, very unique Mystic type special damage dealer, as you can see. All right, so what does she do? She is going to be a character that deploys a cover, increase attack speed of everyone in the circular area. I thought that's pretty interesting. Also, this cover inherits uh, a big percentage of her HP, right? 94%. Now, as you can see, she's much more of a defensive unit. I personally think that uh, deploying a cover, increasing the attack speed at the same time can be kind of good. But in most cases, using something like Ako or Himari is still going to be meta because you want to buff one DPS. Like, buffing the entire team is just most of the time not going to make any sense unless you bring like multiple damage dealers right and right now that's just not the meta for the time being so that's something to consider so uh, in most cases i would say skip her unless you really really love her l 2 d then if that's the case sure you can consider going for her but in most cases i just don't see a reason for for her to shine in any particular uh, rates maybe perorzilla you could use her there uh, but in other cases like Shirokuro, she could probably be used, but there's better characters there for sure. Now, Izuna Swimsuit and Chise Swimsuit, this is the one that you want to like pay very, very close attention to. Because I do think that if these two were to come back in a banner, I would personally try to get Swimsuit Izuna. Now, I can vouch for her for sure. Uh, Swimsuit Izuna is a character that personally, I think she has a lot of potential. She's someone that I use constantly regardless of the raids, uh, bosses, right? Regardless of the colors. She's just that good. Until today, she's still one of the few characters that can decrease crit resistance. Her AS skill is 2 cost. Again, very, very efficient. That's why you can bring her to almost every single raid because you can cycle easily being a 2 cost unit. And you can see it 800% on one enemy and also, you know, you can apply Focus Assault. Now, this Focus Assault is good on Gauss, especially when there's an illusion. You can try to focus down that particular one. Uh, very, very cool for sure. But you can see her basic skill is where it also, you know, puts her on the table. Decreased crit damage resistance for an enemy by 38.9%. Now, in some cases, she can replace Akane in that role to try to debuff the enemy. So very, very good for, for that particular thing. All right. And her sub skill basically just increase attack speed when she lands multiple uh, crits. And this is going to last for 23 seconds. So overall, she's just a very, very solid character. I feel like she's definitely one of the better limited characters out there. Definitely, if there's anyone that you should be pulling, it should be Swimsuit Izuna. But let's just move on in the, in the list so we can get a better idea of the remaining characters and give you guys a, a better overall perspective, right? Now, as for Swimsuit Chise, I don't think she's going to be that strong. She's just a much more niche damage dealer, all right? As you can see, she's a Mystic type as well. The main issue is probably her EX skill cost is very, very high at 6 cost, right? 
and she fires grenades to three enemies and then also can apply stun so the stun can be good right can be cool and then if the target is already affected by any sort of cc uh, she can do even more damage and stun them for five seconds so uh, that's very very impressive if you're looking to just stun some enemies uh she's not bad by any means but you know being a six cost probably if you're trying to use her you gotta pair her with ui or someone just to be able to cycle her cost much more efficiently right so that's one thing to consider but other than that nothing she doesn't bring anything exceptional to the table except for the stun all right if you need to be able to stun an enemy sure i can see she's going to be someone that uh, you want to consider but uh, we also have plenty of other characters that can also stun uh, she also can deal up to 57% continuous chill DOT damage to the enemies as well. So I do think that Swimsuit Chisei is, you know, she is decent, but there's just way more usable or better Mystic type characters out there. Now right after then, we're gonna have the Raid Faction coming in. You can see we have Meru, Momiji, and also Cherino and Marina rerun. So this is going to be very, very interesting. All right, so we have multiple different characters right here. So let's talk about what do they bring to the table so meru is going to be a very interesting one uh, she is a red faction character now again she's a penetration type all right so uh being a penetration type that means she has to compete with a lot of other characters there are for example mika yori there's just a lot of insane characters already out there and she basically competes with them and it's just a very very difficult thing to do right because she's uh you can see she's a five course and she does you know singular damage to one enemy 173% and also inflicts up to 320% of continuous burn for 30 seconds. Now sure, the DOT could be cool and all if you're trying to apply burn, but it's just way better to use Mika or Yori to burst down the enemy than to try to trick trickle the, the enemy down with slow continuous burn damage. Doing that is just not efficient, especially when you're playing raids. Uh, it's all about, about the time. The faster you can beat the raid boss, the higher your score so you, you don't want to like stall it with like doing the ot damage so that's going to be one of her issues all right apply the weak point expose debuff on the target so this one can be cool when attack an enemy with this debuff takes additional damage equal to 2.5 percent of meru's attack so again uh, i think she's not bad it's just there's already plenty of other piercing type characters that can do way more damage so i don't really see her shining in particular she seems to be one more one of the more niche characters uh, plus she's also going to be available in the standard banner so let's talk about momiji now momiji is a two star as you can see very interesting being a two star sonic type character so she now competes with swimsuit hanako now if you guys did pull for swimsuit hanako recently which i hope you guys did because uh, she was the one featured or available in the banner so i did manage to uh, level up my swimsuit hanako to about level 82 so swimsuit hanako is a two cost and she does about 489 percent uh, this is at level three by the way so if i level this up even further it goes up to like 600 percent multiplier right so if you look at this character right here uh momiji right so she's gonna be a four cost that deals up to 356 percent damage to enemies within a circular area her circular area is going to be a, a decently sized one, all right? But you can see compared to Swimsuit Hanako, it's just, you know, it's just not even a fair comparison. She just does way more in terms of the multiplier at a at half the cost, right? At two cost. So I don't see why you need to worry yourself with Momiji. Uh, sure, she could be one of the few new Sonic characters. Good to have an option. But other than that, there's nothing special. Uh, she does increase attack right here. Also increase attack right here. Uh, and also at the beginning of the combat, she can increase attack by 17% and normal attack radius is increased by up to 1.5 times. You know, not too bad of a character concept, but being a 2 star, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now, right after then, you know, you also have Cherino right here. As you can see, Cherino and Marina rerun. So I thought this is going to be pretty cool. All of these are going to be uh, something that you want to look out for. Uh, I would vouch for Cherino more than this characters here marina is going to be a very very good character for sure because she's a very good uh, pvp tank now if you're looking to tackle pvp specifically sure marina can be used right there but if i have to pick one i would recommend cherino for new players uh, if you guys are not aware already cherino has this cost recovery which is very very good uh, this makes her a very very flexible unit flexible character that it can be slot in into any team to be able to generate that cost for anyone so i do think that cherino is going to be you know the better one out of the bunch of these uh red faction character students right now 
uh, in this particular list, right? After that, we have Kotori Cheerleader. Now, she is going to be the few character right here that's going to appear in between. Now, keep in mind, none of these characters are going to be limited except for uh, Izuna Swimsuit and Swimsuit Chisei, right? So, Kotori Cheerleader is a unique character. She's an explosive type. AoE, I believe, uh, at Striker's Lot. So, you can see she's a 3 cost and she can do damage, 390% damage to enemies within a conical area. Now, the truth is, being an AoE character, it's just really, really hard, especially for explosive type because most players probably have Akari, also an AoE character, you know, I, I believe most players have her build. Uh, Musuki, which I believe uh, a lot of players have her build as well. And last but not least, uh, Aru, right, which I believe she's farmable. And, and you know, if you have her since day one, good for you. So the existence of her is just, you know, she's competing with those characters that I mentioned right there. Uh, unless you need like a special cone area uh, damage dealer for explosive type, she's just, it's hard for her to, to stand out compared to the rest of other AoE uh, explosive type characters, right? Uh, you can see this one is quite unique, right? Every 5 EX skill users, she increased critical rate of surrounding allies, except for herself, by up to 21%. And then uh, increased attack by 26.6% for the passive. And the sub skill, every normal skill buff is applied to the ally, increase her own attack by 12.6% for 30 seconds. And this can stack. So yeah, I can see she can stack her own attack, she can buff herself. Uh, that could be what is going to push her uh, amongst the other characters, but I just don't see her uh, being a prominent character that's a must-have or must-build, right? So uh, I think she's going to be a decent choice if you have her, consider building her. But other than that, I wouldn't go out of the way to spend my, my pulls on her, personally. So let's move on with that. We have Noah on a rerun, which again, I believe you can skip. Uh, if you care about what Noah can do, and I do think that Noah is going to be a very unique character that applies uh, Focus Fire, right? Now again, instead of getting her, if you care about Focus Fire, you should be getting uh, Swimsuit Izuna because they probably do the same thing and plus Swimsuit Izuna is limited. So that's that, right? I personally prefer Swimsuit Izuna over Noah. So since they have like very, very similar role, now I do get that uh, Noah can decrease defense while Swimsuit Izuna can decrease uh, crit resistance. I think that's going to be much more useful in the long run. So we're going to have Noah, Utaha Cheerleader and Haruna Sportswear. These are going to be neck in neck. Haruna Sportswear is going to run alongside with Sportswear Yuuka and Sportswear Mary. Now, this is where it gets super interesting. All right, the Tracksuit Yuuka, Tracksuit Mari. You guys probably have heard it before. Tracksuit Yuuka is a must have for a lot of accounts. And I can attest with that. So, for a lot of players, they can consider getting, uh, if you already have Sportswear Yuuka, should you get Haruna? for the tracksuit Haruna. She is going to be a Sonic type as you can see. Very, very interesting. Now, what is she all about? She moves four allies within circular area to the specified position and she heals them, which is a very interesting concept, all right? And she does this at a cost of three. Now, moving character to a place and healing them Sounds like an interesting concept, but if you have Yuka, isn't it better to just shield them, right? In most cases, uh, Tracksuit Yuka is going to be better. Uh, she does provide something that's unique. Uh, she does buff everyone by increasing attack of allies and also decrease defense of enemies by 11%. Uh, she is unique enough. Uh, she's a special character that stays at the back, but I personally wouldn't go out of my way to pull her. Uh, if you can pull for one character, uh, in this particular banner, I'm going to say go for Tracksuit Yuka. I think Tracksuit Yuka is just way more worth it. Tracksuit Mari is also going to be a decent. Uh, these characters are going to be the one that you want to pay attention to. I personally can vouch for Tracksuit Yuka. I think she is still unique enough to the point that it's really hard to replace her. Even with the recent Goss, I can see if you don't have her, it's going to be a struggle. So she's a character that moves your other allies around, give them some sort of healing as barrier, and just protect them all together. And this barrier lasts for very, very long. Uh, she does all of that at three costs as well, which is incredibly insane. So she also casts healing uh, as barrier for someone that do not have barrier. Uh, she's just the meta if you're trying to tackle Goss. All right, it's just, I can't, really see a way to try to, you know, fight against Goss without having tracks with Yuka. She's just a very, very strong, prominent character. Her mystic effectiveness is also going to be very, very strong. 59% increase upon coming to a complete stop. So if there's anyone that you want to pull in this particular stack, I would highly vouch for tracks with Yuka. Plus, you can see 
she is limited alongside the tracksuit Mari, right? While Haruna is not. So why would you pull for someone that's not limited? So I do recommend her and Mari. So Mari is going to be one of the better healers out there competing alongside with Koharu. So I do think that, you know, these two characters are going to be... I feel like Mari might be arguable that you might not use her as much compared to Sportswear Yuka. But definitely, for Yuka, you gotta get her. Now right after that, then we have Ichika and Kasumi. Now these two characters are pretty decent. They are both going to be somewhat meta as far as I know. Uh, alongside in the upcoming red boss for the Sonic type. As you can see, they are both uh, Sonic type characters. But if you already have Simsu Hanako, again, it's really uh, hard to go out of your way to pull for all of these characters that, you know, uh, I wouldn't say they are like the same, but they sort of do the same thing. So let's first talk about Ichika. She's a 3 star, as you can see, Sonic type striker, right? Uh, she is going to be a character that does damage to enemies within cone shape area and she does insane amount of damage. Look at that multiplier. 1380% for an AoE damage character. That is insanely, insanely high. However, she's a 6 cost. Alright, her ES skill is 6 cost, so that means when you use her, it's going to be hard to cycle her multiple times. That means you're going to go need to use Ui to parry her. Alright, she also have this Sonic efficiency that increase up to 63% as well. And also, you know, when attacking enemies that are not in cover, she will deal 4.4% additional damage. Very, very strong character for sure. I highly recommend, you know. Uh, she's one of the better characters, I think, by far, right? Now, alongside with that, Kasumi is also going to be there. Also a striker, right? As you can see, both are uh, exactly Sonic Heavy and Striker. So Kasumi is an EX skill cost 4 character. Uh, enemies in the circular area, she can decrease the defense by 33% for them. She will also be able to deal 432% of damage to the enemies. Alright, again, another AoE character at 4 cost. I think Kasumi is going to be much more usable uh, in terms of trying to, uh, you know, deal damage. I personally prefer Kasumi more in terms of meta because you can see she not only decreased defense, her ES skill cost is way more efficient at 4 cost and she can also deal damage at the same time, right? Uh, every 35 seconds, she does damage to enemies within a circular area and every 3 EX skill uses, she will be able to deal 1204% additional damage. Very very interesting concept of a character uh, right there. Now right after them, this is where we gotta try to look into saving because we have Shigure Hot Spring, Cherino Hot Spring, Chinatsu Hot Spring, Nadoka Hot Spring. Now I get it, a lot of people love Nadoka Hot Spring, she's one of the better healers, I understand. But I don't think you should be pulling in any of these characters because this is where, right after all of this, is where the collab character comes in. Misaka Mikoto and Shokuho Misaki. Now the collab characters are going to be the true limited because remember Hatsune Miku? They have yet to rerun her ever since. So if there's any character that you want to pull, Right until this point, you gotta save for the collab characters. Uh, personally, I would say, you know, if you care about getting these characters and collecting them all together, because it's going to be these two characters, they are not probably not going to come back ever, ever, ever again. So if you miss out on these two collab characters, very, very high chance that you're gonna be missing out on them forever. Just same like how I miss out on Hatsune Miku. Sure. They might not be that strong. Uh, as far as I know, Mikoto is going to be pretty decent. But again, these two are going to be the ones that you want to pay attention to. So yeah, pretty much I would say uh, if there's any meta characters throughout that you really really want to pull, I'm going to say Sportswear Yuka because she's limited and also Swimsuit uh, Izuna because she's limited. As for the rest, you know, I pretty much break it down. Again, I'm going to make more videos once they come out. And one more thing is, this is not going to be official. This is how the JP schedule is. But uh, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Hopefully once uh, next on, release the official roadmap for Global. And then we're going to have a look at it again. But for now, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Take care. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. Give this video a like if you guys enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.